1810, Halley's Comet blazed across the heavens in what was for most folks a once-in-a-lifetime spectacle. And on a West Virginia hillside, a six-year-old boy stood awestruck by the glorious light that would touch him in a way he would never forget. Seventy-six years later, a solitary figure slowly makes his way back to that very same spot to share with this celestial traveler the events of his lifetime. A lifetime that stands as an extraordinary chronicle of all our lives. <laughs> and look at him. Hell is coming. <laughs> boy, oh boy. <laughs> From Step in One Half Productions, John Amos's Haley's Comet. Renowned actor John Amos brings to life the heartwarming, heartlifting, and heartbreaking story of the old man who rejoices over the return of his beloved friend. Yeah, I knew this was the spot. Same spot my daddy brought me to when I was, what, nine, ten years old. Ten years old, and here he come. <laughs> Look at him. It's good to see you again, Mr. Comet. Good to see you. What's it been, 76 years? Catherine being my first wife. Yeah, then come James, Peter, Paul, Simon, Luke, Anne, Cecilia, and Kunta. Huh? <laughs> Oh, yes, sir. Seemed like everybody named the boy child Kunta after that TV show. Come on. Drawing on the experiences of a life spanning more than 80 years, the old man weaves an emotional tapestry laced with captivating stories and mesmerizing characters. This is a show enough, show enough, so y'all listen up. I had just got freed up from slavery and me and a whole lot of other ex-slaves like me. Yeah, we headed west. Yeah. After a few years of working on cattle drives, I signed on as a second ramrod on a big cattle drive that was headed from Weatherford, Texas to some army post in Colorado. They tell me you're going up on your hill top to talk to a shooting star. <laughs> you know what's gonna happen to you they catch you up there talking to a shooting star? I said, no, what's going to happen to me? They're going to come put you in the home. <laughs> now look, when they come to put you in the home, they're going to give you a bathrobe and some of them paper slippers. You ought to let me have them shoes you got on for you going up there talking with that shooting star. Right now, now hear this and hear this well. Each of you will be issued two weapons, two count them, and all the ammunition and all the ordnance you could carry. And through his eyes, we share the triumphs and the tragedies that are the watermarks of a man's journey through life. I swear, sometimes I, I know I can hear that child laughing, Mr. Cummings. See, Anne is the only daughter that has preceded me in death. I lost three of my boys, but she's the only daughter. And during the time he's been here, the old man's formed an opinion or two about some of the things we call progress. Now, Mr. Comet, try as I may, and Lord knows I have tried. I can't figure out for the life of me what is so important in Europe <laughs> that would necessitate me getting on this Concord and getting slingshotted out across the ocean. <laughs> I ain't never lost nothing in Europe. And to my way of thinking, them folks was flying on that thing, what they call the Concord, them folks got to be about half crazy. First of all, to get on that thing, you got to go up north, up there to that New York City. Whoo, terrible place, terrible place. Folks crawling all over each other, everybody ready to fight, mm-mm. No, sir, huh? Once you get up to that New York City, then the cab driver want to take you to the airport by way of Western Kentucky. <laughs> mm -hmm. See? Then you finally get to the airport, they're going to strap you in there and slap you in there and pack you in there like a bunch of sardines, and then boom, they done slingshotted you out across the ocean. Now, four hours later, your behind is in Europe, but your mind is still somewhere out over that ocean. Now I ask you, 
a simple question, Mr. Cum. If your behind is in Europe and your mind is still somewhere out over that ocean, what difference will it make what time you get there? <laughs> okay? And if your behind and your mind should both somehow happen to get there at the same time, you can bank on one thing, your luggage ain't gonna be there. The old man's passages also mirror the pains of a growing nation and how those struggles touch the lives of the people closest to his heart. She come to me one summer she, she had gotten involved in what they call the civil rights struggle. Yeah. She come to me, she say, Daddy. I say, yeah, baby. She said, I'm going down south. Say, you going to do what? I'm going down south, Daddy, Mississippi. Uh-uh, no, you're not either. What business you got in Mississippi, child? She said, Daddy, I'm going down there to help register black folks to vote. I said, oh, no, baby. Uh-uh. No, sir. Now, you let somebody else do that here. Don't you get mixed up in that here, especially down Mississippi. She said, Daddy, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? Well, she'd watched some of her brothers march off to war. Some of them didn't come home and say, Daddy, I can't go to war, but I've got to fight right here. So she... She went on down Mississippi. Haley's Comet. It reminds us of how things were. Now, I got a little granddaughter that reminds me so much of CC. till sometimes I swear, Mr. Comet, I think the good Lord done brought her back through again. <laughs> I seen over there the other day the little one playing with her playmates. She's playing doctor. And she had a little made-up stethoscope around her neck. And I, I, I called CC. I said, come here, come here, step here. Look at that little one over there playing doctor. See her? You hear what she just told that one? Listen, no Blue Cross, no treatment. Hmm? <laughs> that ain't nobody but you. <laughs> Audiences and critics across America and overseas as well have been captivated by the charm, the humor, and the universal message of Haley's Comet, a message that crosses the lines of color, economics, and nationality to touch the hearts of everyone who joins the old man on that West Virginia hillside. John Amos's Haley's Comet, the story of one man's life that's a story about all our lives.